Hey everyone, it's Rachel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I just got the Neve Glowforge Spark in. So in this video, I will be unboxing it, setting it up, and maybe later I'll bring out my Glowforge Aura and we'll kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison. I just got this the other day. I did open it up just to make sure that everything was intact, but I did want to go through the whole entire unboxing with you. So let's go ahead and let's get started. I did purchase this online because they had that special pre-sale offer of $100 off. I'm not too sure if they have this in store yet but when I did get my Glowforge Aura I actually got that in store because they had it in stock at a local Joann's but my only complaint is that when this was delivered this security seal was already broken off which really sucks because I know once this thing is broken off it literally says that your item cannot be returned once the seal is broken so so yeah this is a box that it came in not too heavy at all but yeah, this is just my minor complaint that the security seal was already taken off. That's why I just decided to open it up to make sure that everything was still intact. So let's go ahead and open this up. Once you open it up, you have this thing that says to set up your Glowforge. Go to setup.glowforge.com. We have this foam up top and then another foam. Ooh, it honestly looks like the Glowforge Aura, but just a tad bit smaller. And when you open it up, we have this foam right here and it kind of protects the little camera that's on the lid of the Glowforge. All right, so looking deeper inside, we have the laser head over here, some more foam, some cardboard boxes just to kind of keep everything in place. And then we have this tubing, which is the filter. I already have the personal air filter that I got with my Glowforge Aura. So this will connect to that exactly the same. I am going to take out the machine and then we'll see what's underneath it. Okay, it's not too heavy at all. So I don't have a specific place where I want to place this yet, but I have that craft cart behind me and I'm just going to place it on top of there. Okay, I place it up there and it surprisingly fits so perfectly. Similar to when I was unboxing my Aura, there was something at the bottom of the machine. So in this case, it's the same. There was a cardboard piece underneath the machine. And when you open it up, we have this Glowforge light cherry plywood and it has a QR code. So that means that when you put this into the machine, the camera and the software will scan this QR code and then it will know exactly what settings it would need to cut, engrave, and score. So this is super handy. Um, yeah, they just included one sheet of that. And this is the cutting tray. This is placed at the bottom of the machine and you will place your wood or acrylic or anything on top. And whatever falls through, if you cut pieces tiny enough, it will fall through and it will collect at the bottom. Other than that, that is it for what is in the box. All right, so let's take a closer look again on what's inside. I'm gonna take this out because this is the filter and inside we have a plug. This is just a power plug. So this will be connected to the back and this will be connected to your outlet. So this filter hose can be connected from the back of the machine to either outside if you wanna filter out a window or it could be connected to the personal filter. Make sure to keep all of your boxes and absolutely everything just in case you need to return it. Or if you're moving your laser around because it is a portable laser, I think it's important to keep everything so you could put all the foam back and all the cardboard back just for, you know, safekeeping. And inside here, like I said, is the laser head, which is a magnet, and it connects to this square magnet right here. I'm gonna take this out. Oop, a little difficult doing it with one hand. And then the laser is actually connected to the back of the machine through this silver ribbon. Glowforge does have a setup video on their website and I think it's super helpful, but I'm just sharing my point of view. So anyways, taking this, this is the laser head. I am just going to pop it on right here and you'll kind of hear it click because it's going to um, stick together because they're magnets. Yeah, so a really soft click. <laughs> then these are the rails and this helps the laser move back and forth. And then the laser will also move side to side. I'm gonna remove the foam on this side and I'm gonna remove it on this side as well. All right, so that is basically all that's in the machine. Right here you have these little ledges and this is actually where I am going to be placing the cutting tray. So taking the cutting tray, I am going to insert it right here and it's going to fall into the little ledges that I was talking about right there. 
it doesn't really snap into place. It kind of just fits perfectly within the edges over here. I just used the power cord and I plugged in the machine and automatically the light inside of the machine turned on. So it's glowing as well as this little button is also glowing. It's glowing like a light blue teal kind of color. So I'm gonna have to jump on my computer and finish the setup. Now that we have the Glowforge Spark situated, let's go onto my laptop, set it up, and have it connect to Wi-Fi. I am on glowforge.setup.com, and because I already have an account, I'm just gonna log in through that. After creating an account or logging in, for my case, it asks you to download the Glowforge Setup app. So I'm going to do just that. I'm gonna drag this over so I can download it as an app. When you open up the app, it might ask you to log in again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once you open up the app again, it will ask you which Glowforge printer are you setting up today? And today I am setting up the Spark. So again, they have a bunch of helpful tips and videos and instructions on how to get started. It's telling you how to set up the exhaust hose. And then next is a Wi-Fi setup. It says, turn on your Glowforge. If the button is not illuminated, hold it down until it glows teal. So it was already glowing teal from what I saw earlier. And yeah, it is still a teal color. So I'm gonna click next. So because the button is a teal color, you're able to find it in your list of Wi-Fi um, options. Technically, it just says the Glowforge and the serial number. So I'm going to click on it and it's going to connect. Perfect. It's connected. And now it's asking you to connect to your current Wi-Fi that you are using. So I'm going to go ahead and select my Wi-Fi and input the password for my Wi-Fi. Perfect. It says that I successfully connected the Glowforge to my Wi-Fi and now I hear it kind of calibrating and moving it around. So that's a good sign. I noticed once it connected to the Wi-Fi, this button is no longer a teal color and I heard it move around. So I think right now it's probably scanning the area. As a recap, we got the technical setup out of the way after plugging in the machine. As you saw, the button was blue. So we downloaded the Glowforge app and from the Glowforge app, we were able to connect the Glowforge to the Wi-Fi that we will be using. And now that that's all done, we can head over to app.glowforge.com, which is basically the dashboard or the home. And that's just basically where all the magic happens. Because I have other lasers, I already do have an account. But up here, after logging in, in the right-hand corner, you could see that the Glowforge Spark is connected as well as the air filter, and it is ready to go. So I'm gonna click on that to select the machine. And I actually want to do the Gift of Good Measure keychain with you guys as my first cut. The last time I did this was years ago on my Glowforge Pro, so I think this would be fun to do it on the Glowforge Sparks, on the Glowforge Spark. This is a free design, so you don't have to pay for it. And I'm just gonna be using the light cherry plywood that you know came with the box. It automatically scan that QR code so it recognized it as the light cherry plywood material right up here. On this left hand side you can see the different things that will be happening when we're making this. We have these little lines that will be engraved as well as the numbers. These circles and shapes will be scored and this will be cut. This is a really great starting piece and I think you'll like the outcome of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press print. As you can hear it, it is scanning the area so that it knows where to cut this keychain out of. You can also click Click the design and move it wherever you want, but I'm just gonna leave it right over here. Okay, so the total time for this entire cut is seven minutes and 52 seconds. The button's blinking, so I'm gonna press that and it's gonna go ahead and do its thing. The cut is finished. I'm gonna open it up. Okay, so I'm taking it out and the cut came out pretty nice and clean. It cut all the way around the edges as well as the circles and this little part, which is where it would be like a keychain. But as you can see, obviously the area that needed to be engraved was the word Glowforge and it didn't really engrave it well. Oh, I take it back. It did do it pretty well. I don't know why it looked like that earlier. It looked like it didn't engrave deep enough, you know? 
Okay, I take it back. This is a very good first cut. As you can see, the light cherry plywood is already nice and finished. This is why I really like Glowforge's proof grade materials because the wood is already nice and finished and all you really have to do is remove the masking tape. As you saw, I was a little doubtful at first because I was afraid that the laser did not engrave deep enough because I couldn't see it through the masking tape. But after removing it, I really like the outcome. So this is my first cut on the Glowforge Spark. This is the, what is it called? Gift of Good Measure Keychain. Again, you could find this on the Glowforge app. But this is just a great example to show you what the possibilities are with a laser like this. It could cut, engrave, and score, and it shows all of that in this keychain. So the keychain was cut out, the Glowforge name was engraved, and all the little notches were scored. So this is a really good first cut. And quickly before we end this video, I wanted to show you the size comparison between the Glowforge aura and the spark so i'm just going to hold it up side by side we can do an in-depth video in the future but just to give you guys an idea um, of what it looks like side by side so let me go get that okay starting off with the glowforge spark it is a smaller rectangular looking kind of laser machine and it does have some limitations if you watch my other video i kind of go over that it doesn't have a pass-through slot and the bed area to cut in the limitation is i think 8 by 12 as you could see right there and for the Glowforge Aura, you can actually fit a 12 by 12 inch sheet. So it's a little larger, um, more of a square, and apparently it cuts three times faster than the Spark. As I mentioned in my previous video, I do plan on passing on this Spark to maybe a family member or something, because I think that Glowforge is a great brand to start off with, especially if you're, you know, brand new to laser cutting. And there you go. That is my unboxing and setup experience with the Glowforge Spark. It was pretty quick and easy to do. I hope Hope that this gave you some insight again if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and if you are interested i did just open up registration for my membership create and elevate the only membership out there for beginner laser crafters like you with the glowforge aura or spark in that membership you'll be getting so much value and you'll be getting a lot of hands-on help especially from me so if you're interested go ahead and click the link below but of course here on youtube i will continue to be making videos so if you have any questions on the glowforge spark or aura i'll be happy to answer them and to make a video on that yeah that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching i will talk to you all in my next one very soon bye guys